Hello, and welcome to the video version of the Left of Greg podcast. I'm Brian Marin, the host and creator of the show. As always, I will be joined by human behavior expert, Mr. Greg Williams, who the show is affectionately named after. On the show, we discuss different topics through the lenses of what we call human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. If you'd like to find out more about what that is, please check the links in the episode details and go to our website to learn more. Please don't forget to follow us on social media. The links are also in the episode details and hit the like and subscribe button to help support our work. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Brian. I need you to sit very still. I'm reading your body language right now, and I'm going to tell everyone all about you just from doing that. Well, then I know you're full of shit on this morning. <laughs> I, so, I certainly do. I see we've, we're have just getting started. We're already on the same page. Um, <laughs> so uh, we haven't done, this is our first episode, like just specifically dedicated to talking about body language. Yeah. But we brought it up in a whole bunch of other ones, other episodes. And because that's like our number one thing people want to learn is like, okay, how do you read body language? And you're like, okay, stop, stop, take a step back. And then because the problem is you have a lot of these charlatans out there uh, claiming all these things based on reading someone's body language. There's nothing worse than when they do it with like politicians. You see them on the big cable news mm-hmm. network and stuff like that. And you're like, wow, these people suck. Um, they are making shit up as they go along and putting in their own beliefs on it. Kind of like almost like, a, I don't know. It's like a, I'm, I, I study personality tests. So now I'm an expert in human behavior. And no, you're not. But we'll get to all that. Stuff. Trick. Yeah, it, it, these are mostly yeah. parlor tricks. So when we talk about human behavior and reading it and predicting it in real time, you know, I, I, to give an example, if we, if we were to have a three day course, let's mm-hmm. say there's 30 hours of material in there, what 30 minutes of that is specifically dedicated to, to body language, uh, meaning um, it's the last thing that, that we rely on or look at or discuss. Cause there's only so much you can tell from someone's body language because it's so heavily influenced by the context of the situation. Right. So I can't just say, Oh, someone did this. It means that it's not that simple, right? It could nope. mean a, a, a number of things. So there's a lot in here that we're going to jump into one specifically context, uh, to terminology, uh, how we describe it. And then just kind of what, we really mean by body language because there's a lot of great stuff out there that does talk about it and in communication especially when it comes to communication i mean um you know they say like there's all these percentages thrown out and they're they're just used to to describe it it's not a specific thing but you know i've seen everything from 80 to 90 percent of all communication is nonverbal, and and that's a good way to describe it in terms of meaning uh, a lot of it is is your body language um, uh, that I'm seeing, uh, the different biometric responses you're having in the situation, and then also heavily like the the pitch tone and inflection of your voice. All of those things go into uh, uh, what really determines what you're meaning, and which is I just like those stats because it shows how little we actually pay attention to words really right the words matter right. but but that's almost so the smallest part of communication and so meaning it's not just about what you're saying it's how you're saying it so i like those in terms of that because it's a great way to describe it and show people hey there's a lot more going on here but by no means are any of those things you know specific numbers and even the people that write that stuff will tell you that they're like well no this is just a guideline and how we articulate stuff so i think that's maybe a good start to to reading body language and determining yep. what someone's doing by what they did with their hand three seconds ago and how they moved it across the like that stuff I can't stand because it's junk and it gives people corrupt file folders. But most of it has to deal with context. So so where okay. where should we kind of kind of start with this? Well, first thing, the overall everything that you said was true. I'm not going to argue with anything, but. I do want to bring up the parlor trick thing. Listen, Mm -hmm. the reason that those pundits can go on and talk about, you know, this person did this and this person did that, they're likely never to have Obama come back on CNN. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And say, you're full of shit. (laughs) Right. Clinton's not going to come on, right? Right. They're not going to get the guy to go, you know, right here. I didn't mean that. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can pretty much get, you know, I hate the term pretty much, but you can pretty much get away with anything when it comes to that. Now, literally and figuratively, when you're talking about uh, uh, body language transmitting messages uh, uh, non-verbally, that doesn't mean that you can correlate a movement or a motion, uh, kinesiology, paralanguage, body language, to a specific thought 
in the moment because your brain isn't transmitting one-to-one signals. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I think an argument could be made, one, uh, congruency, if, if, for example, I love sarcasm. I, I, I use it as a training tool. And so if you come in and go, I love that song you're playing. If you just go by the words, do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. Somebody goes, oh, I got a great compliment from Greg today at work. No, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> but but the, the uh, incongruency in your message that you're delivering via body language, that might be important. But I want to go back to what you're saying, too. The, 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 the reason that in Combat Hunter, uh, uh, Kinesics was the last the, the reason in, in spec uh, uh, body language is last is because we spend so little time on it. Now, right. if everything else that you do is congruent and you're getting a likelihood indicator that says it's an ML, a most likely, or an MD, a most dangerous course of action, then body language coupled with something like biometric and the environment, you get what I'm trying to say? If those are all congruent, then it's a good argument that that's probably what's going on. Well, listen to that. That falls well below a legal standard, you yes. get what I'm trying to say? But it's certainly in my situation to prevent violence or predict mayhem, it'll work perfectly. Do you get what I'm trying to say? For for example, Brian, I, I throw my shoulders up, I drop my head down, my brow, brows knit, and I start making a fist. Well, dude, either I have to take a shit, I'm having a seizure, or I might be getting angry with what you're saying. I don't know with any sense of, of, of certainty until I measure those cues against other cues and then against the environment. That's the key. No, and, and I think a great place to start is always the context, right? What yep. is the context of the situation? Because you just brought that up, like getting an angry face or something like that, or, or you know, like the, the, the foot tapping, because I'm, I'm pointing, yes. I'm talking to you, but I'm pointing away with one of my feet and my foot's tapping. Yeah, that means I could be walking away and I don't want to be here anymore talking yep. to you, but like, I just may really have to go to the bathroom. In fact, I yep. might be very interested in what you're saying. I just got to pee really, really bad, or I'm yep. very nervous about what's going, right? There's all of these different things. So one thing is always we start with is what is the context for which you're viewing this observation? Because, you know, that we, we could be, you know, uh, uh, influencing that context. Yep. And now we're jumping to an unreasonable conclusion. Yep. So always, and like you said, <clears throat> the environment plays into that. Um, the temperature, uh, uh, relative humidity, my comfort level plays into that. Uh, yes. uh, everything I've been doing, whether I've slept much the night before or, or not, uh, whether I just got done exercising, these are all things that, that add into that context for some observation I'm making on someone. The, you know, the, yep. the, the scratching the nose when you're asking me questions, Greg, yeah, okay. It could be me getting nervous because my and my hypothalamus is sending me warnings through heat, which bother the cilia hair like fibers in my nose, which yes. make it agitated and make my nose itch, which is why uh, Pinocchio, his nose grew every time he lied. Or it could be, or I got a really bad sinus infection. Or, you know what? I like to do a lot of cocaine and maybe I just hit a bump in the bathroom before I came to talk to you. There's all these other factors yes. that go into play. I can't jam that square peg in a round hole. So the context is is always important um, to, to establish. And, and what we teach when it comes to human behavior in order to get to that body language, like you said, is last, right? It, it's rapidly establishing context, right? So yep. what's informing the baseline, right? What's, what, what's going on in this situation? And then I, I, I would say the next step after that context is what you, you brought up the term and you brought up congruence. Yes. Okay. So, so you just, you said a great line. I've actually never heard you say that before where your brain is not transmitting on a one-to-one -one ratio of signal, right? So yes. I meaning it's not, it's not having a specific thought and then um, uh, having a specific demonstrative uh, right. uh, for, know, that, for, for that it, thought, right, right. But that's right. not really how it works, right? No. So, so what do you mean uh, by that? Define that a little bit more and then, then congruence, right? So, yep. so what do you mean by congruence? So your brain chunks information. It in pixelates it, uh, uh, the visual field being the largest sense-making uh, uh, tool, throws it back to the optic nerve. The fovea centralis uh, plays the film, and your brain extracts normalcy from the film. When it comes to an anomaly, when it comes to something that it's not familiar with, that it doesn't have a file folder on, it assigns the amygdala and other parts of the uh, limbic system, the cortices, to say, hey, what's this in my environment? And can it kill me, eat me? Can I screw it, uh, eat it? You get what I'm trying yeah. to say? And, and you know- Do I have to fight it? Do I have to run away from it? Precisely. Yeah, it's a very so survival-based, yeah. 
10 to 50,000 signals from the amygdala alone are going out for the one signal that you're reading. And the reason is it's predictive analysis. So your brain is geared towards survival predictive analysis anyway. So when you are talking, you're, you're taking in the context, the relevance, the words, the tone, the pitch, the, 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 the uh, environmental uh, uh, impact of, of what you're saying uh, around the person that you're talking to. All of these things are being processed and microprocessed. And what happens is your brain is going, yeah, good, good, good. Everything's going fine. Everything's until it gets a speed bump. The speed bump being an anomaly and going, huh, right there, the person, you know, jog, jogged their face and uh, crossed their arms and looked to the left. Now, your brain doesn't do what humans do. Humans say, aha, there is a signal and we have to have what, what word just went by. And so yeah. we start replaying in our thing. Okay, well, when I said handgun, I got this reflex. Now, inside the person's brain that you're talking to in the interview room, They've got one, survival masking that's going on. They're trying to, to cover any foibles or embarrassing things that they've done since birth because you're interviewing them and you're in a position of power over them. So they're trying to conceal everything. I, I you know, I, I shit my later hosen in second grade at the yeah. job fair. You, you get what I'm saying? Those are things that we don't want to share with others. So those are covered up. So what's happening? Why, why were we at a job fair in second grade? Uh, why were we in school? But... I was a German family, Brian. <laughs> yeah. They take things seriously. Well, later yeah, hosen, that's why yeah. I had to wear a later hose <laughs> and carry my little horn But the idea is that when we think of a photograph, we think that a photograph takes a one-to-one. -one. It doesn't. Right. There's a very, right. very specific camera that has to do that where you can make a comparison comparison of something. So what you're getting at best is sort of a kind of feeling, and I hate talking like that, but that's what it is. It's right. kind of this wispy, you know, uh, sand uh, painting of what's really going on. And your brain doesn't really assign anything that gives a shit until you come to the point and you say bikini or you say hamburger. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Or increase in funds. So, so we have to be very careful that if we're going to create an interview, then we have to create the conditions for the interview and then say, this is what we likely know after the interview. And the easiest way to do stuff like that is with questions. And that's what humans don't yes. do. So you're dicking around with your nose and I look at you and I go, hey, dude, allergies, you know, cottonwood. And, and when, when I do an interview, what I do is I suggest things and see how the person goes. So when I say just the word, you know, cottonwoods, and I, and I act, you know, like Gilbert Gottfried, you know, cottonwoods, uh, uh, then I let you have it. And if you're a liar, you'll go, yeah, that's the uh, cottonwoods that are bothering me because the sign of, do you get what I'm trying to say? You're going to feed me an incongruence. Well, right. Yeah, Rather and, and than before, say, hand me a tissue. Before getting into the, the, the deception stuff with it, you know yeah. what I mean? You, you brought up something, you know, since your brain is not on that one-to-one -one ratio of things, right. we'll often attribute value to something where it may be Absolutely valueless. Well, yeah, it, but, it may, but, but we right. don't know, right? Because right. there's always a, a catalyst for me to change something, right? So if I'm yep. sitting in a chair and my legs are crossed and I'm leaning back and yep. then I put my hands up on the table and my feet are in that like starting gun position and I'm at the yes. edge of my seat uh, and I go, you I see that, that massive chain from one to the next, though, that's a change in my body language. That's right. a change in my demeanor. So there's, there's a reason for that. There's a catalyst, but we don't know what that is necessarily. So no, no, so and, and don't attribute it to deception, Brian, before no, 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 no. I want to I make sure that our listeners know we're not talking about that. I would stop the interview immediately when I saw those and go, and you know, yes. yeah, yeah. No, well, right. I'm, no, so, I'm just using this example before we get yeah. into like an interview or anything. I'm just saying that that example sure. of those extreme changes in body, like there's always a catalyst. There's a reason Absolutely. for that. But maybe it's because, man, I just got super excited and interested in something or I'm looking at my phone and I got upset of something I read. Or again, I got to go to the bathroom. Right. So right. Or just have to be behind careful. me walk by with a coffee and I'd really like a coffee right about now. Exactly. Right. And, and so so that's what I mean. So what well, the idea is, you know, what, what we say you're looking for is is congruence, right? Do the words coming out of my mouth match what's going on with my body, right? So so meaning if I am I pointing one way and looking at the other and talking there, like exactly. there has to be congruence. So when you're talking about now in a conversation or interview, right, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, normal, I, I know I'm having good conversation with someone. Um, if we're both facing each other, Greg, let's say we're standing, we're both standing yes. and we're both uh, uh, oriented toward each other uh, yes. from my head, shoulders, hips, all the way down to my feet. And they're pointed yes. directly at you and you're pointing directly at me. What that means is we're 
we're transmitting and receiving on the same frequency, right? Right. Yes. We even even if we're not, maybe even we're upset about something, we're both engaged 100% in that conversation, right? So what I'm looking for is that congruence is is everything lined up, right? Because then I know, okay, the, the words coming out are matching up with the actions uh, we're having conversation. Now, when there's that change, all of a sudden I turn a little bit or I face that other direction. Okay, now if I see you do that, Greg, we're having a conversation. I know maybe I'm starting to lose you or you're gaining interest somewhere else. You're starting to attend to other things in yes. your environment. So it's important. Now, again, I don't know why. Maybe I said something that pissed you off, but maybe you're trying to include someone else. Maybe you have some other thoughts. So I have what I have to do is be careful about what I attribute that value to, meaning I can't just say, oh, he did that because I said so I must have said something that he didn't like. And now he's trying to yep. get away when in fact your head, you're going, damn, Brian brought up a really good point. I want to bring in that other guy over there on the left who had a question about that earlier. You see how that works? Like, yep. I just want to kind of point that out as what, what we, we don't always know what that catalyst for that change in behavior is. No, but there's usually something, right? But I mean, me, there's a me, reason. Let me touch on a few words that the audience needs to know. One, I'm going to say training changes behavior only based on the fact that if you're trained in paralanguage and body language, you're going to do great. And this is going to sound like old hat here. The second part of it is that when you're uh, talking about having a conversation, my interview, it's the same thing. The oldest form of communication is paralanguage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's how we got things done. It's how a mom with a newborn baby still yes. communicates. You yes. see, And the newborn baby that hasn't achieved language is sending all kinds of messages. So this is as old as we are. The, the, the part of it, when I talk about an interview, even if I meet somebody on the street, Brian, you've been with me long enough. It's an interview. What can I do yeah, for you? I don't, what, yeah. do you do for me? Exactly, what do you know? Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So don't don't uh, allow me to mix up words and, and right, drive right, us right. from the point because everything in life is an interview. So right, let's it's talk a about, any conversation yeah. is yeah because you're you're giving up information, you're getting information. Precisely. Absolutely, yeah. So so the oldest, most primitive form of communication is body language, and the furthest from your brain is the purest signal. So what you're doing with your hands is hugely important. What you're doing with your feet is hugely important because Why is you that? Know, yeah. your, your, your brain has to reach a long way for those sensors. And those sensors have to be much more, uh, 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 imagine getting foot surgery. You know how many sense receptors you got on your feet and on the bottom of your hands? Those are like a cat's whiskers. Why? Because they're farther away from your body and the message is going to take longer neurally. So, so it's important for them to be able to pick up certain cues in the environment. So just like you talked about the hypothalamus heating up to warn us by heat, heat's a great warning. It's, it's it, it, almost instant. It's like getting butterflies when, when, when the amygdala yeah. uh, decides to drop down cortisol into your stomach to warn you, uh, that, hey, you don't like going out for public speaking. Don't do right. that. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So those type of things in our environment are triggers to tell us that what we're about to do is, is different in some manner. So meeting a new person now uh, might be fun, uh, but 35,000 years ago, it might have been to they were sent to kill you or poison you or gather information for you. And your brain doesn't know the gosh damn difference. Your brain is like the dog that's waiting for you to come home. Right. It doesn't know if it's just how long. left, yeah. right? <laughs> you, you get what I'm trying to say? So that's why I mean there's no one to one. So, so, and then as your brain is going through the Rolodex, going through the file folder for similarities, we decide that we like a person in nanoseconds, Brian. Immediately. We, okay. And that's olfactory, the mm -hmm. smell, the look of the person, the way the person's standing, the words that they choose to use or not choose to use. And then we muck it up as humans yep. by going, oh, they just crossed our arms. They're closing us off. What boob came up with that? Yeah. Okay. When you cross your arms. That's a comfort signal. That means that the person's comfort in themselves or they're cold. Do you get what I'm yeah. trying to say? So, so uh, uh, I broke my arm. You know, you remember Shelly's tented elbow thing. Mm -hmm. So Shelly crosses her arms just to, to give relief to the elbow because arthritis is set in and it still hurts her. So instead of misattributing, read it in its totality. And every time that you get to a groove in the record, stop and ask a question. We would be such a, a much better society. Again, I see you digging in your nose. Uh, cocaine? And, and you know me, I'll say one word. Why? <laughs> yeah. Because that one word creates a file folder in the person and they go, no, it's not cocaine. Pass me a tissue. I have a summer cold. Now I know what to attribute that to. And I also can measure what I'm hearing against the reality of the other thing that people say. Have you ever met a consummate liar, Brian? A person, yeah, no matter what they say, they're lying. one up. Yeah. And they right. just can't stop. 
okay, so what value do you give anything coming out of their mouth? Right. Hey, it's a million dollar lottery ticket down at the liquor store. Hey, kiss my ass. Right. You, but, but a person that you're meeting for the first time, you start arranging it. Hey, I think I like the cut of this person's shit. So I the, like the way the they're funny saying thing it, for people you know? who can't see right now is because yeah. we kept talking about it so much. My nose started actually. Yeah, yeah, but like, the, listen, you can do that. Can't yeah, you? Exactly. Can you talk yourself into being pissed? Yeah, right? you can talk uh, yourself uh, into being angry. You can get yourself worked sure. up like that. You can. And Those because... are rehearsals to your psychological stance. We uh, Brian and I did uh, a series of uh, uh, courses about bank robberies and teaching the people that worked at banks specifically how to predict them and how to mitigate them or, or at least lessen the consequences. And Brian, you'll remember that that short series of photos that we used that shows the bank robber ramping up, getting ready to go. OK, yes. well, while we do that. And, and communication is a game of inches and nanoseconds, really. Uh, so when you see a person do that, remember that most persons are so flippant egotistical that they're not listening to what you're saying in the moment. They're waiting for you to stop so they can say their piece. So now you see the person react by sidestepping and looking away for a second. What they're doing is rehearsing what they're about to say, just waiting for you to go yada, 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 yada. Well, Billy said, do you see what I'm saying? So that would be a complete failure in body language right. during an interview. And you would go up and you would testify to it. Yeah, Your Honor, at that time, I knew I was pissing off the, the suspect. Shut up. You know, I mean, how does that start? No, and, and how we articulate is important, right? So we keep sure. it general because you have to. Like you said, okay, your feet are the farthest thing from your brain, right? So yep. that prefrontal cortex all the way up in the front part of your brain, that's that's what people refer to as your lying brain, right? That's the yes. one where you can make up all the stories and fantasy to, that you want. And then, you know, you go farther back into your survival limbic system. That's, that's they call it like your honest brain because it doesn't lie. It only knows survival and it's trying yep. to keep you alive. But like we always say, your feet are the farthest thing. Um, so they're, they're one of the most honest parts of your body. Right. Yes. And you'll see that in, in groups, right. You got a group standing, each, uh, you know, near each other, you'll see, okay, that person likely is more comfortable with that person because they're standing closer or their feet is pointing at them. Right? You, can, you can tell all that stuff because that's a very honest, it's autonomic. You're not thinking about it. Right. So, so I like big stuff like that because, you know, you can, you can, you, you can use that, right. You use it as general rules or general concepts to understand, right. Because then what you also brought up without specific talking about is, I think you mentioned earlier is, is clustering these cues, yes. right. I can't go off of one thing unless it's ob so blatantly obvious or so specific. Right. Um, and this is where I see a lot of things go wrong, where people will learn something. We, we refer to it as a parlor trick, but a lot of times some of that stuff started off actually where it will make sense or will work, but only in a very specific defined context, right? Because you brought up like right. interviews, like there's different interview techniques for like law yeah. enforcement and stuff. I won't get in there because they sue, yeah. but, but they, they were do, actually, some, yeah. some of them were, uh, uh, yeah, some of them were designed for a very specific context and worked right. in that context. But then what happened because it worked, people then took it and said, well, I'm going to tr apply that here. Or now I didn't know that I was only supposed to use yes. it in that context. So now I start doing that jam in that square peg in that round hole. And I start confirming my own biases. And then exactly. the next thing I know, someone gets locked up for 40 years and they didn't do the crime. That's how that stuff happens. So, so add that term observer expectancy, yeah. right? Because we expect to see it. Therefore, we put our thumb on the scale autonomically or automatically. And you're exactly right. We say, hey, right there, he can confess and the person excuse me please that's not what that meant at all right but now we're in a, a jury and people are going ah maybe he did mean that so very quickly your uh, analogy of the feet is is brilliant and you talked about orientation we should bring that up again later because orientation is a very important thing psychologically yeah. as important as your stance but i want you to imagine that you're a kid and uh folks when you're in the military you spend a lot of time in a laundromat uh and it's not fun time <laughs> Uh, no matter what you bring, it falls short of what you think it's going to do to pass the time. I guarantee it. And so you go in the laundromat and it takes exactly 22 minutes for the washer, takes exactly 18 minutes for the dryer. Uh, and you add those two numbers together and it's over 30 minutes. And the first seven minutes, you're so bored stiff. You want to think, uh, can I, you know, slam something in something to get an arouse a lot of myself. And now imagine that same situation you as a kid. So the kid is sitting down there and the kid brought their earphones and they brought their real phone and they brought everything else. And a couple of minutes in there, so bored shitless that they want to leave. What are their feet going to do? They're going to be sitting in the chair yep. and they're going to be swinging their legs. 
Now you're going to say, yeah, well, because of the chair and the leg and the distance and the coefficient of friction, I'm going to say that kid is kicking you. That kid is mentally thinking about mom brought me to this shitty playground. I hate it. And so the kicking is a manifestation of the turmoil that's going on in your brain. When, it's when it, reasonable to assume that in that environment. When I say a great, perfect example, because kids are the best because they're very demonstrative, right? Yes. They haven't learned to control their emotions as much. They're very, very, yes. very, very honest, right? And and yep. it's great because it's like reading body language, but in slow motion because you can see it a mile away. But that's a perfect example. And they get angry, folks at you, and what's the stomp my feet? Yes. Right. That's the you, your your example that you just brought up right there. That's the same thing as someone stomping their feet as they Absolutely. walk out. They're trying to stomp on you and kick you. That's what they're thinking in their head. It's a very primal reaction. And so I, I think that's another good yeah. um, example. So the, 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 the thing with a lot of this stuff is because, you know, you see these different experts talk about different ways to present yourself. I even had uh, uh, my cousin actually reached out a, a while back because He's coaching um, uh, a football team and is college level. And like, he would always, he's like, we got a problem with like guys on the sidelines, just their body language don't look like they're, I'm like, you know, what can they do? You know, how to understand the body, body language of, you know, to look more, you know, confident and do this I was like, well, it, the, what, what they're showing is, is they're demonstrating what's going yeah. on internally. This isn't Absolutely. some external thing. There's something where they lack. So rather than focusing on their body language, you got to build their confidence in some way, right? It's a, it's a different way to look at it, but it's, it's very powerful because you see a lot of the, you brought up public speaking. It's like the number one fear in the world. People hate yes, public speaking, absolutely. right? It's still like, I mean, we still, I still get nervous going in front of a crowd and yep. I do that for a living. It's still that, you know, cause I'm, I, I got a lot of stuff in my mind. I got to make sure I hit everything. You know, it's, there's still, that's still there. But, but one of the things they talk about, like these power poses, you know, you stand in the mirror, you know, you put your hand up on it's your hips, legal you team your now, right? and then, and, you know, you take the big, big breaths and stuff like that. And it's, it's, and, you know, have these mantras to say, and it yep. actually, it, it's a temporary sort of solution to that, meaning yes. it's it, because it's how powerful, the, how the electrochemical neurotransmitters in your brain work. It's a fee, it's a loop, right? So, so one, it can tell you you're confident and then you will start acting confident because yep. of something happened, but you can also do it with your body language and kind of trick your brain a little bit into thinking that way to help boost that level of confidence. So I don't use it as a, oh, that's a great way to do it. I use it. That's a great way to understand how your brain interacts with your body and the effect that it has when it yes. can come from your body to your brain or from your brain to your body, right? That feedback loop is constant. So you, it can go either way. It can start, excuse me, it could start at either location. Does that kind of make sense? That's precisely it. And, and the idea is if a yawn uh, or a sneeze can work and spread through a crowd, and I don't mean the way COVID does or STDs, uh, then uh, uh, visual cues in the environment. For example, you can be a better listener by crossing your arms and putting your hand on right. your chin and, and nod when a person's saying something. Even if you're not attending to what they're saying, the person will get a confidence boost. They'll speak better. You'll hear better. And they'll slow down their delivery system so you can have a com communication. Brian, how long does it make uh, uh, take to make a movie? Uh, a movie like a fast movie is like yeah. 45 days you know what i'm oh, saying that's hey, yeah, they have some like 45 indie project in or indie, some, yeah right? and and it's a one camera at bubba deal yeah. and they're making this and and you know atlanta and 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 uh, uh the, the they call it the bubba when uh one person is doing the camera and then they pass it to the other person <laughs> that's uh for fishing and stuff that's where that term came from right yeah uh, not being pedantic or, or no 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 I, yeah and, i know what you're talking so, about yeah so now brian if we do that shoestring budget film and the, the film is only an hour and 20 minutes long, yep. but we've taken 10 times that in days mm -hmm. uh, to rehearse. Why? Because incongruent signals send us off the reservation. Yes. So you're... all of a sudden I'm starting to talk and I'm trying to be a nice guy and I'm trying and, and it's coming off disingenuous and it's coming off like you're a, a, a jerk. And so movie goers. Uh, say, this isn't what I read in the book at all. These aren't the characters that I found. So now you got the audience that doesn't like it. The guy that wrote the film or the female that wrote the film you, hates it. The actors aren't getting into the role. So come on. You, yeah, you'll see that sometimes watching a movie or something where you're like, you don't like that character yeah. and it's not by design. There's something up and, you, and sometimes you just see like they're they're not good at playing their role, right? They're not the best actor because, yeah. you know, you, you're, you're, your brain well, is picking up on that incongruence, right? You're exactly and, right. And, so I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, because the only another great way is that is like um, people with different either like 
uh, mental health issues, personality disorders, yes. autism spectrum, that kind of stuff. Like you'll see because they're, they're, there's incongruence in what they're saying and how they're behaving for the yes. context. Your brain immediately goes like, well, what's up here? So, so, something's up. And it's to sense the potential yes. of uh, danger or my, my uh, 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 information has to be brought to a different manner to get that person on board. It's, for example, let's go back to Hollywood for a minute. Kevin Spacey. Uh, Kevin Spacey can play the creepiest person in the world. I wonder uh, why. All you need to do is watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, Brian. That's why. Science, uh, Isaac. Uh, the idea, if we take a look at him in, in a film like uh, The Usual Suspects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where he makes these transformations and all that other stuff. And remember, Hollywood had to say, hey, look, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to hint at these things and we're going to expose yeah. them all the way. But the idea is it really does show his range. Uh, his best range is a film called Horrible Bosses. Yeah. And then there's a character that he plays from that earlier on where where uh, he's the gives a thing about the shark, you know, uh, shut up, listen and learn. And I don't remember that that film. But but if you're a uh, film buff, go look it up. The idea is Spacey has a wide range because he can play that devious shit because he knows it. It's him. He's playing his thing. Now, we take a look at uh, another actor, Vincent. I believe it's Vincent Pastorelli uh, uh, could play a great uh, uh, bad guy could play a great mob guy, could play a great neighbor. He had this wide range of characters that were quirky. Yeah, and he yeah. was quirky. In his real life, he took a, a, a bunch of drugs. Uh, uh, allegedly, his uh, girlfriend died from gun violence. He went home and he uh, uh, died himself. Now, nobody's putting all that stuff together because it's Hollywood, but it's a suspicious situation that's brought on. And when you see the actor on uh, uh, acting out his role, you have to think, did he leak a little bit of his true self? Oh, yeah. Home? So if you can believe that line, and what we're talking about now is a psychological stance, certain people are predisposed to talk in front of crowds. Certain people are predisposed to when they show up, other people want to listen to them. And naturally, okay, we boost them up into these roles where we feel comfortable. And that's why when we watch certain characters that sell us products or advertisement, we're willing to, to listen and learn from that person, even though it's an act, it's shit. And what do we call that? Fundamental attribution error. Yeah. And so, so uh, people go, well, you know, sometimes I hear these terms that you talk about over and over. It's because your brain is a finite system mm -hmm. and it has a way of checks and balances and a way of probing the environment and it's consistent. And if you're giving off an incongruent signal, if your body language isn't matching what's coming out of your mouth, your brain is going to call anomaly. And once every anomaly has to be investigated. So once you get used to picking out anomalies, you'll be better at HR. You'll be a better lover, a better parent. You know, uh, uh, the best way to learn about the person on your speed date is to shut up and let them talk because they're going to want to tell you things about well, themselves. The, 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 the date example one is always great because yeah. it's interesting because it's, it's how, you know, the, the difference in men and women on that, on those situations. Cause I remember, um, I remember being out at a bar restaurant. We were at the, like the high table seating area in the bar yeah. and looking over and seeing, uh, uh, you know, these girls were hanging out, they were having some drinks and you could tell the table full of guys. And I'm like, okay, one of them, they're clearly talking about those girls. One of them is going over there to approach and he's going right. to eventually talk. Right. So as soon as he does, he walks over there, but all I could see at first was just the women's reactions. And like, they kind of like, I could hear him talking, but I couldn't see him because of where this post was. I couldn't see him much of him, like just like the back of his head. And then like, I could, you know, see them and hear what he's talking. And all he was saying was like, Hey, I'm so, and so You're just normal. Hey, I'm trying to introduce myself, be court. Like the words coming out weren't much, but I looked at their reaction. They're kind of pushed back a little bit. And then one, like in her lap, like put her purse, like oh, in her lap, all of a sudden I'm like, what the yep. heck is going on? It turned around and I kind of like, you know, lean over to where I could see him. And the guy is standing there and he's just talking to him, trying to hit on him, but he's like rocking back and forth and his hips are going like back and forward and back and forward. Yep. Like, okay, dude, Oxytocin, baby. exactly what you're thinking about doing yes. right now. You're clearly want to have sex with one of these women. And this one girl's getting like a little, uh, uneasy. Where did she put her purse? <laughs> yeah, she exactly. Put a barricade she, right up in front of the vagine. She put a barricade up. So in those situations, in that context, you could see, okay, she, that, you know, hit, 
his behavior affected her, which changed her body language to where she was laughing, having a good time with her friends and her girlfriends. And then all of a sudden it was like, things got a little bit weird and she felt the need to put a barrier up. So you'll see yep. that now again, well, hold on right there. But at that I point. knew, I knew yeah. why she yeah. put up the barrier only yes. because I could hear and see, I mean, if I had been a thousand yards away with a pair of binos, you know, yes. I, maybe they were talking about her mom that just died or something. You get what I'm saying? Like I can't the, attribute it. So. The difference that I want to make sure right at this point, because we know we, we've got some uh, uh, haters uh, 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 that hate everything, whatever the capital Z comes across. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and uh, uh, because they don't read and they don't listen and they want their way. Uh, uh, even if it's wrong, the way that we can say this with a great degree of certainty, Brian said, I was a witness to this. Now we yes. would do that, but instead of just witnessing it and writing about it, we had people tagging along with us for years. Yeah. They would do the studies and the tests and go over and go, hi, we're doing this. This person is saying, well, one of these things is true. Could you tell us? So they didn't use a confirmation bias. You know, are you happy? Are you sad? Did you, can you explain to me, explicate why you stood in this manner in which it, and the person was, wow, I was really turned off. Okay. And that includes not only places like, uh, uh, Pacific Science and Engineering, Cognitive Performance Group, Brian, that's the Army Research Institute, ONR. Those people went over right when we were doing it and we would make our, and I'll call it a prediction, and they mm -hmm. would go over and they would go, holy crap, these guys are right. That's different, Brian. That's different from me playing a parlor trick. I, I'll give you That's a different quick... than the news commentary because you exactly. never get to find out what the real right. answer is. So I, I know with great certainty that my stuff works because we were tested. People came and did experiments. Uh, uh, Shelly and I went to see a uh, uh, guy that was performing in uh, Arizona. We actually drew from Colorado all the way to Arizona to attend the, uh, to attend a, the guy's uh, thing. I don't want to use his name. He's probably still out there, but he's a seer of things. Oh, uh, uh, and he can read your history oh, and do all this other the, stuff. And he the, had a TV, show. the TV shows. The you know I know who you're about. talking about. Crossing you know exactly. over. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I can't say Edwards. I did. But we drove all the way down to Arizona. And uh, it was right after uh, a couple of months after September 11th. And uh, I had just lost my, and my we, we had lost people, uh, both Shelly and I. And we said, well, it's worth a try. Let's go down and see, because what we do, we don't believe it, but it's a good parlor trick, so let's watch. Yeah. So when we came in, there was this interview process that was going on with the seating and the people and the greeting that was before the event that I thought was telling, because I guarantee you that that was where all of the information was drawn from. Uh, uh, hey, look at how these people sit, how they dress, what's that artifact that they're carrying. And this one woman that came in that we picked out early, Shelly and I, uh, had an arc. And on the arc was two of every animal. And it was this overly large uh, 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 piece of jewelry, let's call it. And the guy picked it out right away. So we were happy because we picked it out of the crowd when it was coming in. And the significance that Shelly and I assigned to it as rubes, as rudimentary, we didn't know anything about this guy's play was, uh, that's the boat going to heaven because churches are built, yeah, old yes. Orthodox churches are built like ships. You feel like you're in the galley, even the way the seating is, and it's the ship that's going to take you up to God. So Shelly and I are doing this, and we're doing what's called a cold read. Uh, um, and all of a sudden, the guy starts saying, uh, I'm seeing somebody, and it's about a boat to heaven, and the serious business. And their friends worked for a company in New York uh, that died during September 11th. And this was the remembrance that they got all those people sitting in the boat. Okay, Brian, that's not uh, neuroscience. What no. that is, is that is looking at a totem pole of yeah. a Native American tribe and saying, I think that's a salmon. I think that's a bear. Right. Those things are important to their economy. And without salmon oil and bear juice, we're not going to uh, make it into the next millennium. So I want to separate what we're talking about. We're saying that certain psychological stances, for example, anger, mm -hmm. okay, are yep. easier to read than uh, uh, deceit. De deception, you know what I'm yeah, to say? or even okay. like e con contempt and disgust or close. Yeah, or they're so cold. close. Yeah. They're so close, but, but anger and happiness aren't. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, somebody's going to call an encounter, one of those uh, uh, classic obstructionists that I'm talking about, and they're going to go, yeah, but sometimes people cry when they're happy. No, that's electrochemical neurotransmitters, and that's also science. You know, mm -hmm. when you're overwhelmed by event, certain chemicals come on board, just like you were talking about. When that guy went over there, if somebody swooned and they touched their hair and they yep. turned their jugular and carotid, You'd see it. Why? Because oxytocin is a drug. It's how babies find moms. It's how certain things happen. You can't well, fight those. But the no. marginal ones, that's where the people are completely 
full of shit. Well, that, they're, they're it, assigning it, importance to something that's not important. It, it's taking it. Uh, it's, it's what I generally see happen is people take that quantum leap of logic, yep. right? Where their yes. their observation point. is correct, but they take they attribute way too much value. Perfect example is a, a female. What what they'll do more so is like if I'm like put my hair back and expose my neck and wrists or anything. Yep. Those are what people would call like passivity signals. Like right? I'm being, you know, it, and all it really is is I'm I'm okay being vulnerable physically around you, right? Meaning, yes. meaning I, I'm comfortable is all it means. But someone will go, oh yeah, that chick's totally into me. It's like, no, dude, no. <laughs> she's okay. She's, so, she's, she's the waitress that she's taking your order and, and she's she wants like a that good with day. everybody. Like, so you so to, again, you, have you made to a read funny that. joke and made her laugh. That was You're that. exactly like, right. You know what but, I mean? But, but you have to read that with, with historical. Look, I almost got fired from a, a, a company when we were in Florida, because the people, I was training them uh, to train the Colombian Marines. And I, I don't yeah. mean Colombia as the gem of the ocean. I, I left mean, the before other I could get fired. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so we were having a conversation and the conversation went to uh, oxytocin and some other yeah. uh, thing. And we were talking about neural transmitters. And it's like, do you know where lipstick came from putting it on your lips? Because then your lips stimulate another part of your body that becomes blood engorged when you're a female. And men like that because it's the first of the four Fs. That conversation got me drug out into the right. hall with the shepherd's crook. And it's like, you can't have that conversation. I'm like, well, high schools have it in maturation class. Right. You get what I'm trying to say? It's biology. That's why dress designers make it so you can see the humps of the breast or the humps of the butt. Right. Uh, because it's all about this. And they say, it's, oh, well, you know, I'm a Christian family. And, well, you know what? Christians procreate too. Back off yeah. the gas a little bit, pal. And understand that certain things tempt us. Well, so sometimes when we touch our neck, or when we touch our face, we're yeah. imagining that person coming out and it manifests uh, through through a drug or a chemical or an electrochemical uh, uh, reaction. And that's okay. But those signals, Brian, those are best seen when you're with binos at a distance because they become automatic or autonomic and the person doesn't even know they're giving them. You see oh, what no, no. And, and you, you bring up uh, another reason how people take that quantum leap of logic when you're talking yep. about the science behind why certain things evoke or provoke certain reactions or, or, yes, or e you know, whether that be electrochemical neurotransmitter or social reactions, you know, you're just yep. saying, this is why, this is why that occurs. And people are going, you're telling me, that that woman wears that dress because she went, it's like, no, that that's not what we're she talking about. No idea. Oh, but she like, was attracted to that dress because yes. somewhere in the recesses of her mind, yes. the most primitive part of her said, Very I think, I think that this is attractive and will attract a man. That, that, that's no matter it. what and, that man and, is. And it doesn't mean anything other than that. And and that's it. That's a good point to to bring up. And and yes. th those differences are good and and how, you know, uh, you know, we we get into because uh, you talk about congruence and clusters and all that stuff. The, the only real way to tell about a lot of this, if it has any value, is you have to have some sort of sustained observation, right? Absolutely. I can't just do a snapshot real quick and tell, well, sometimes it is powerful. Do you, oh God, do you remember the teams in, uh, I forget which country it was from when they showed the, the picture of the insider threat in Afghanistan and said, one of these guys in this photo was the one that attacked us. And we all went which, that one right yes, there. That's yes. sometimes it's so powerful. And they're like, oh, holy shit. How did you know that? They're like, dude, that's called mission focus and predatory looks. Since I know there was an attack, I'm picking who obviously I know they're in the photo. So, yep. so I, you know, I just, I don't well, know. So, so compare people, that, right? compare that, Brian, the, the you to were the getting 49 people in the photo. Exactly. So, so you see a person, okay. You don't know what the context is yet. Okay. So you can't establish relevance, but you see a person in a baseline and it's the only person that's barricading this area and parking and moving. So they have an escape route. Well, I don't know what's about to happen, but either that's a public speaker that wants to get out quickly. That's an armed robber. That's a suicide bomber. That's a criminal. So I'm right more than I'm wrong because normal humans don't, and when I say normal, I'm talking about clinically, they don't have a, uh, 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 let me give you a, a, a perfect example of that. And we have a thing that's called a nystagmus. Nystagmus is a very simple thing. The eye shakes uh, when it moves and stops. And when it's tracking things, it tracks them smoothly and then has to have the ability to move around sort of like a, a building on springs uh, to an earthquake, right? So if you think about this, the police uh, through science adopted a thing called vertical gaze nystagmus or horizontal gaze nystagmus. Either go up and down uh, uh, like the old Three Stooges movies or left and right, yang, 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 and, and the eye jiggles. 
Well, it jiggles at such a frequency, and I'm streeting it down, that you can compare that to everybody else. And when you have alcohol or drugs, it jiggles differently. So that gotcha. comparison alone can give me probable cause to arrest you. But the point is, before they start a horizontal nystagmus gaze test, they have to find out, do you have any medical issues? Do you have standing right. nystagmus? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do you have these things that would be misconstrued as cues? Why don't we do that with everything? Now, you and I do, and we teach our folks to do. We're not giving everything away from free. But the idea is that we have to take a look at the comparative baseline of all the different factors that could be. So if we see a person that's limping in, we can't say they're limping because they've got an RPG down their pant leg. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes. We have to compare the cue against the likelihood and against the environment. And in any question uh, period where we are worried because there is a missing RPG uh, uh, and the guy is kind of limping that way, we go over and we tap on his leg and go, what's with the leg, Pappy? That's the difference. And Brian, what we're talking about now is science. Science is uh, uh, conducting experiments to confirm or reject a hypothesis. And and you brought up a, a good thing earlier too to, to talk about that is, um is mirroring right so sure. normal human like we're talking to each other we're having a conversation things are going well we will start to mimic each other's behavior in subtle ways Absolutely. so like i might scratch my face and then a couple seconds later you might scratch yours uh i might lean back a little bit you might lean back there's little subtle things to show okay that I, even at a great distance, I could see that and say, okay, those two yes. are having conversation. They're on transmit and receive. They're on the same frequency, right? They're, they're starting to mimic each other. And, and I can see, even if you're on board with what I'm saying, if you're agreeing with exactly me, exactly right. right, you'll start to mimic my behavior slightly. So I can throw a rock in the pond to see, right? I can be having that conversation and maybe I'll change up the way I'm standing or I'll put my hands on my hips. And then you might actually autonomically do the same thing. Now, if I'm observing that, 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 that's, that's good, right? Right. That's a good thing. I can say, okay, this communication is going well. I should continue this. So there's little stuff like that, that we can say, all right, normal, normal in the clinical sense of human behavior, communication, and interaction, we'll, sh we'll see some sort of mimicry, right? We'll see that because of mirror neurons in our brain, because yep. of just social mimicry and isopraxism and homophily, right? So that'll start to, and that's how groups start to form, right? First, we that's start exactly behaving it. a little bit together. Then we start wearing the same type of clothes. Then we start using the same terminology, right? Absolutely. When I see those in those teams or those groups, you go, okay, these, this is a, this, this team, this group, they're all on the same page. They're, there's this sociological bond that you can see, and that'll manifest itself throughout. So then you, it's easy to compare the person that isn't part of that group because they're exhibiting none of those behaviors. They're, they're maybe not using the same terms, not dressed the same way. Uh, there's all of these other the outlier. Yeah. versus them, you know, scratching their ear and tapping their foot at a certain time, right? So before you even get to that stuff, what I'm saying, there's sociological yep. ways you can show through mimicry how yep. that body language is different than what we said, remember, compared to that baseline, it's different than this known over here, because that's what it starts with. I have to come absolutely to or I have to sustain that observation to see if I continue to see that anomaly. Does that kind of so that's spot on again, we can prove it. A limited objective experiment is the best way to prove this. So put yourself, listeners and, and viewers at home, put yourself in a situation where you're going to go up, even if you don't like, uh, 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 they posted a job at the airport and Lon works at the airport. So I'm going to go try out for it just to piss my neighbor Lanny off. You get what I'm trying to say? I think that's hilarious. So I'm going to have to go through the interview process. And if people that know me what know they, I'm going to do what that. What if they give you a job? So, yeah, well, looks like you're going to have to have more podcasts. Yeah. So, but uh, the idea is that I just think that shit's funny. So if you're in that situation, do the following. One, when you come into the room, uh, don't shake hands, keep your hands in your pockets. And as a matter of fact, when the person uh, uh, goes to uh, uh, shake your hand, blade slightly away, change your orientation. Uh, number two, when they say, please have a seat, take their seat. Uh, number yeah. three, uh, 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 look at your phone the entire time as if the answer to whatever question is in the phone. Uh, uh, and those type of things are so contrary to how humans behavior in that environment that you'll not only not get the job, you'll get escorted off the premises. If that does in fact work, we prove the negative. So it's obvious that 
increasing the all the 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 the, the contrary the alternative the other side of that is going to be true which means okay that we can prove that corollary would say now increasing eye contact makes people feel good but there's a creepy range so stay out of the creepy range not enough mm -hmm. too much um uh shaking a person's hand is fine shaking their whole body probably not so much <laughs> right. uh, uh getting close enough that your mirror neurons kick in is probably good sitting in the person's lap during the interview probably not so good that's what we're talking about brian and isn't that the same in all of the domains whether yes. it's a anchor point or you know physiological or sociological it's the same there's a sweet spot and there's extremes stay away from the extremes you're generally going to be okay no I, I i agree with that and and then you know the 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 other thing i noticed with stuff is you know, words matter right we always say oh, that yeah. and and how we describe something because then um, it could change the way we observe something. So I'll see people yes. say like, oh, that's, you know, think of like a little kid in trouble, like looking down, maybe cross one arm over the other, kind of shake back and forth. And they're like doing some sort of like pacifying yep. behavior. They yep. feel uncomfortable. You'll see that. But, you know, that also changes over time because sometimes I'll get the little one, the insurgent, right? She wants to go stay out later with her friends or go outside or go do something. She'll come up and look down and go, can I... Um, is it okay if I, so she's mimicking that behavior because she's trying to make me go, Oh, Hey, what's wrong? Are yep. you okay? <laughs> right. That's so Hermione she's Granger using her magic wand to exactly. change the environment. Yeah. But, but, but the, so, so it's, it's always important how we describe it. And the reason why I bring that up, one of the biggest uh, terms I hear that I have an issue with is something when someone calls it a pre attack indicator. Oh, come on, um, which is a horrible term. And I suggest everyone deletes it from their vocabulary. But uh, that's just my opinion right there. And I think something more important or, or a better way, a more accurate way to describe something would be a pre event indicator, right? So someone will say talking pre event indicators, Brian, for forever. Four decades, but, but, exactly right. but you, you kind of brought up that example before as you're talking to someone, all of a sudden the shoulders come up, they start bawling yep. their fists, the corrugator muscle, the nose opens yep. up, they start breathing heavy. You're like, okay, those are anger cues. Right. But that's a pre event indicator. I, 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 you may see that in someone who's just about to take off on a 50 yard sprint, right? Not yep. punch me in the face. But the, so, second so, uh, I, but the second I call it a yep. pre attack indicator, I now you biased it. I have now biased my own, in, my own observation and now said, now I start seeing everything else as building on top of that. Right. So, 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 so street it up again, Brian. An erection, and, and sorry, folks, uh, yeah. uh, this is okay for everybody because even uh, kids get them. An erection can be accidental, incidental. It can be a pre-event indication, or it can be uh, uh, none of the above. Uh, because sometimes you wake up with one, you don't know your brain's recycling a dream, and you're like, oh, boy, I wish I could go to the bathroom right now, but I can't. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's because you see uh, uh, a scintillating or titillating information. Right. And it processes uh, chemically or, or neurally. Uh, uh, sometimes you have an extreme head injury. I've seen uh, uh, blow tops where everything else uh, is, is uh, dead and something else is, is not because the neural pathways are all mixed up now and the message has got to go somewhere. So there's a panacea, Brian, of different potential choices, but it only becomes a pre-event uh, uh, indicator of something when it's going to be used for what it was designed for. Right. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So now if a person's in the bedroom, we've got the music and all that other stuff is going, uh, it's likely to show this. In those other instances, there's a chemical or a medical or a physiological or a mental uh, uh, reason that those things are happening. So, so uh, and, and why am I going down that path? Because it's something that you can see or think of or have had or have had access to before that shows you how those things are. So one thing doesn't necessarily mean anything. And, and therefore, uh, 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 what, what's the guy with the uh, Enigma code? Uh, uh, Turing. Committed suicide, Turing. Uh, okay, so uh, 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 Turing was gay. So to fix him, they chemically castrated Jesus, him. I know. Okay, but think about it. One There's of the most a brilliant people 51. ever walked yeah. the face of the earth and contributed to de defeating the German code exactly. in World War II. Virtually single-handedly yeah. when it came to information and intelligence processing. But we're here saying because that uh, we decided that yeah. this makes it this, and therefore the chemical castration is the right way to solve it. Shut up. Don't read yeah. into. Don't square peg round hold it. Don't read into it unless you have compelling evidence, artifacts and evidence that would tend to show that the, the totality, all of those clusters of cues coming together 
would suggest this is a likelihood. And that's so what we do the, the other term that I, I, I have a problem with is when, when someone uses the term furtive gesture. Um, because, because right I, now I, defense attorneys clapping, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, right? Yeah. 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 But, well, rightly so, right. We can get better. Yep. Meaning, you know, we've said, you know, a furtive gesture attempting to like conceal or hide something in an action, right. That's can be described as a furtive gesture. There's, there's a bunch of different uses I've seen for it. So I actually oh. don't entirely know what the meaning of it is, uh, anymore, but can you explain why? that maybe yeah, not yeah, be yeah, the yeah. best choice of words or could be articulated better, right? You get what I'm okay. saying? Because we're talking about reading yes. body language and, and the term furtive gesture has been been used quite a bit, but but that's going to get, you're, you're going to no, get no, some no, you're right shot on, in that, right? So, so this is what I would do. I would, I would uh, uh, talk to the prosecuting attorney and I would say, okay, let's bring the jury out to the parking lot where they parked, where the jury parked to come inside. I would have one of them at random chosen by the bailiff or chosen by the defense attorney unlock their car. And I would say, do me a favor, uh, take three things out of the glove box, take three things out of the trunk, and then take three things from under the driver's seat. Now, what you're going to find is the things in the glove box, although dated, are going to be stuff, the Mentos you couldn't find, uh, the, the, the registration from four years ago, yeah, the car flashlight that doesn't manual. work. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When you go in the trunk, you're going to find stuff that's normally in the trunk, the tire, the spare. Yeah, you're also going to find my, my gym equipment. You get right. what I'm trying to say, that right. kind of stuff. When you reach under the seat, first of all, your hand <laughs> is going to be shitty and gummy and sweaty. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get a mouse turd and you're going to get that. Uh, gum wrapper. Uh, 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 see? Yeah. So, so would you say that it's less likely that you store something of value under your seat? Okay. I, I would and then somebody absolutely would, agree with that. No. Somebody would say that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Now, once I got you thinking reasonable, I say, now I pull behind you and put on the red and blues. The first thing you think about <laughs> is reaching under your seat into that mouse shit, sticky, horrible thing. I can't see the, the, the even you over the don't, steering wheel. Don't know what's there. Yeah. I'm weaving and all that other stuff. Right. But that was my first thing, not to go into the glove box where my registration, registration is. is. Yeah. Not to reach back into my, my uh, laundry bag and grab a, a towel because now I'm sweating. But I want to reach under the seat. So I would now assign that piece of lexicon furtive to that motion and say the likelihood increases in my mind that the person's trying to discard or hide an item. I just got that jury on board. You see how that works, Brian? Right. What I did is I did a, a limited objective experiment and I put likelihood as the key. That's not saying certainty. Certainty and likelihood are two completely different things. But all I got to get is one person in the jury going, yeah, I guess that's pretty furtive. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So that's how life is uh, in the day-to-day uh, uh, day -to -day of a profiler. And you know that. You know that we have now uh, uh, created monsters in our own brains. Yeah. And we don't think like normal human beings. We're constantly doing uh, redenigration, taking things apart, putting them back together, wondering what the gestalt vision of something is. Yes. Is it different at a distance? Don't we do that to everything now? All the time. Is danger, you know? Well, and, and so that, that's, a, that's a great point on how to use that term or clearly define what you meant by it, right? right? Because each one of those things, one, you're using two comparisons and it's something that everyone's done. And anyone, I, I, how many people now have even ever reached underneath the seat of their car unless it was they were in you know at the car wash cleaning it out with the little vacuum thing that they had Precisely. that you saw so so i think that's, and the that's, nozzle was built to get under the driver's underneath seat that, ex exactly so so it's a you when using it as a comparison it will obviously hold more value and make more sense um the other thing that that we we do a lot as humans, um, it's just another thing I kind of want to discuss a little bit is um, like autonomic self touch, right, or, yes. or different behaviors. So, like I always see, like you could sit in a parking lot and watch people get in and out of their cars and tell who has a concealed, you know, handgun on them because you know what do they do as soon as they get out? They touch it. You're like, oh, it, it, exactly that person right. does an appendix carry. It's right there in the front, or that one uh, person yep. does it in their in their in, uh, in the back. I don't know what you call that, but whatever. That that that's where they're. Uh, carrying so you can see stuff like that but we do that with everything right 
when someone says, hey, do we have everything? People will touch their phone or their keys in their pocket and grab it and make sure, little stuff like that. Or my favorite was, I remember with Blackheart, when he would forget to buy, or he didn't, he ran out of Copenhagen when he ran out of Chew, mm -hmm. he would sit there talking to a bunch of Marines, stand in front of him and act just with his fingers like he's packing yep. a can of dip. Until? Sure, sure enough, <laughs> one of them, one of them would either take their dip yep. out or touch their pocket that had it in. He'd just be like, hey man, can I get a pinch off of you? And they never got it. Like, how did you know I had that in there? You know, it's just that that stuff will happen autonomically. We'll mimic yep. that. I'll see that you have that and, and I'll touch that. I'll see, oh, Greg, you're a police officer carrying a gun. You have a gun on you. I see it right there. I'll touch mine, even though I'm not supposed to have it on me. Right. Yep. So, so yep. that's, that's a, that's a powerful indicator as well, that autonomic self-touch. So you can use that again, like Hermione Granger's uh, 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 wand. And if you want to break up a conversation, grab your phone. You don't have to check mm -hmm. your phone, just hold your phone. And a few seconds, everybody around you at the room yeah. is going to hold their phone and they're going to start. And if you actually glance at yours, oh, they're screwed. They're going to glance at theirs as well. Uh, you remember we were doing a crew from Coronado uh, and uh, we took them to an area that had a vast parking lot and everybody had their binos and their NVGs and their thermals. And we said, put away the NVGs and the thermals, just use your naked eye, then your binos to confirm which of these cars is occupied. Go. The idea was just wait a few minutes. The person that was in the driver's seat talking to you know the person next to him or eating or anything else would adjust themselves in the seat. And what would they always touch to give them leverage? The steering wheel and put their foot on the brake. Those two items would give them the torque necessary to adjust in their seat. So randomly, you would see a set of taillights come on. And I would go, what do you think? And they would look and they go, holy shit, how do you do that? Brian, the environment speaks to you. You have mm -hmm. to read those cues. So you've got the known, okay? Then you've got the unknown, the thing you're going after. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Between those points, you have to find artifacts and evidence to focus what it is that you're trying to find without putting your thumb on the scale and creating a connection. If you create the connection outside of auto uh, autonomic or automatic or uh, biological or physical, what's going to happen is you're always going to skew your own results. And that's why when you take a look, uh, we just had a, a genius on the show not too long ago, and uh, we actually asked him why they couldn't recreate some of those experiments over and over. Well, it's because the yeah. conditions changed each time. I did the experiment with uh, Maslow is a perfect example, but I don't want to talk to that asshole again. But the idea is if you get seven people that are doctoral candidates in a Harvard class, yeah. it's going to be different than the friends we hang around with doing it at flipping Applebee's. And so the idea is that you have to get good by receiving the right amount of training and then constantly sensing your environment. And Brian, the way I've been teaching this for, for my entire life was rock in the pond. Rock hits the pond. Ripples go out, hit the lily pad, frog jumps, bird flies, and all we see is the bird. An inquisitive mind would go, why is that bird flying? And try to work back to see what were those influences, what were those arousals or schema that came up that created that bird flying? If we walk around like that, we can be situationally aware, we can be in tune with our environment, and we're not going to be hyper alert or, you know, scared of everything that moves in our environment. No, and that that's a that's a good general point. I think when it comes to the body language stuff, um, you know, the 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 three big things, is, which is why I want to bring them up, is one yeah. the, the context, you know, congruence and um, clusters, right? If yeah. you know, if there's something, if someone feels like they're evasive on something or, or, or you think that's what's happening. Well, you have to keep the observation going and come back to that, compare it to something else, compare yes. it to a note, compare it to a likely, you know, you already know the answer to a question, you know, when you're talking about interviewing stuff or, 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 or talking with people, but there really is, you know, no, just relying on well, just relying on one any single domain at all, you're you're getting into the realm of unscientific, right? Yes, I can't just absolutely. go at the one thing. I have to couple it with or cluster it or or you know with something else. So some other domain, whether that be the context or the congruence. Yep. So I can't just look at one specific behavior that someone um, demonstrated or did. I have to take it into the you know the totality of the circumstances, everything that went into that and why they did it. So. That's the other thing too. Again, when, when we jump to that, you know, I don't always know why someone did something, but I can tell that they did it and there was a catalyst that's science. for it. That's right? science. But, but let me give you the other side of that coin. Just for those people that are really paying attention, I'll give you an example of subject matter expertise. I am a subject matter expert on my daughter, Andrea. 
the wean. Okay. Yeah. Because for 11 years, no matter what I told her to do, she would cl close one eye, roll the other one. And that meant, oh my God, did you really tell me to do that? God, geez, dad. And I knew all the behavior that was going to happen after it. And I knew I was going to reinforce over and over what I was going to say because she wasn't on board with whatever I gave her. 11 straight years of living in the same house, talking to her every day and trying to get her to do certain things. And that was Andrea's response. Now, I can't look at your kid. Right. I can't look at a kid in the mall and, and you know, the kid's got Bell's palsy and say, oh, well, there's the Andrea look. You get what I'm trying to say? Or look over here and see your daughter uh, or son respond to external stimulus and draw the same conclusion. But when it comes to Andrea and that move, I can testify with a great deal of certainty that every time that I saw it over those 365 times 11, which is 3,000, yeah. whatever days, which comes out to this hours that I saw it, that you can testify to. So I can testify on the stand to, well, my daughter used to do this thing and it kind of looked like that. And based on the other factors, you see what I'm saying? So it can get me in the room, Brian. It can get me in the cube uh, uh, of the ice cube tray, but that doesn't mean that it's conclusive. That means that it's likely. And so those standards are still great standards to write a search warrant or an arrest warrant or fire somebody as, you know, being from HR or just watch your people and determine which one's, you know, thieving off you, taking office supplies. So I, I just want to make sure that, yes, you can be a subject matter expert, but the standard is it's, really- Well, really in a limited no, that's a great example because if the, uh, the insurgent does that too, if I, when I ask yeah. her, I go, hey, would you brush your teeth? I know if she, if she gives the immediate, like looks right at me and, and says, yep, um, brush my teeth. I know she did, but if she pauses for a second and what she does is she like licks her teeth almost like, mm. right. and he goes, yeah. And I'm like, okay, get your ass in there right exactly. now or I'm brushing them for you, right? Exactly. Because I, but, but again, that comes from me seeing that before I go, that looked odd. Let me walk in there and the toothbrush is bone dry and there's the sink is, is bone dry. I was like, hey, come here, right? But I, again, that, that happened over time that I've seen that enough in that yes. specific context. Now, Greg, if I asked you if you brush your teeth and you did the same thing, that's completely different. I can't apply the same standard. They're not here. my teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like Ed Gein. No, but exactly that point, Brian. So so we can tell, with, listen, I'm going to make another pitch for training, not because we need the money, uh, but the idea is that you need to get, look, every book that's written is written from the perspective of the author trying to get you to make a car sale or yeah. get laid or do yeah. something else. So therefore, they're immediately suspect. With their parlor. The, Those are the parlor tricks we're parlor talking about. Parlor tricks, yeah. exactly. The other thing is, if somebody tells you just stick with this one or two cues, yeah. yeah, but they have to be in the right context. So if you're a copper or if you're HR, or if you're a teacher, or if you're a parent, getting to training where you train in all the domains and human behavior uh, 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 and body language are part of the topic you're probably going to be okay. And, and one thing is nothing. Yeah. You know? And, and you, you can, you can also stick with the most universal cues, right? Everywhere yep. in the world, you know, your head goes up and down. That's, that's, that's yes. If it goes right. side to side, no, I mean, except for that, maybe what, that the one, one tribe, the island. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in the middle, but then that's so right. obscure, like things like that are, are general generalizations that you can use because they work in any domain, in any culture, in any country, that kind of thing, because that that's completely universal. So it's the whole, you know, congruence. If I'm, if I'm saying yes, but my head's going left and right, no, that's, that's kind of difficult to do. Right. So, so, so that I'm seeing yeah. incongruence. So little Absolutely. things like that are, are big. And then, you know, the, the different, some of the differences between men and women, their body language, what that means, but um, I, I, I like sticking to the big core takeaways, you know, like we said, feet, farthest thing from your prefrontal cortex, yes. most honest part of your body. Hands so, second hands, most, right? Uh, stuff like that. And then we talk about orientation, right? Orientation is huge, right? You can only orient on one. Technically, your brain can only do one thing well at a time, right? We don't well, like- And why does your brain orient? Yeah. Your brain orients the rest of your body because you only have a certain functional field of view. Right. Six degrees or 11 degrees. And the brain- wants to turn your olfactory, your mouth, your ears, your eyes, the sensory input portions towards what the stimuli, the, the, the external uh, arousal is to get the most out of it. Now, if you're hearing a sound and you don't orient towards the sound, you're so familiar with it, you've got yep. it, or you're so clueless, 
You get what I'm trying yeah, to say, but everything. Think of a little kid in a other. restaurant. Yeah. A little kid in a restaurant hears a kid cry. Immediately, they start to orient. Why? Because in their kid brain, they're going, if that kid's crying, I need to know. Yep. What happens when somebody drops a, a, a tray of dishes in a restaurant? Oh, yeah. We Home all place. orient because yep. that could have been the front door getting flogged out by a terrorist. So those big picture things, Brian, are much more credible than the nuance. Oh, do you see where that person, you know what I'm saying, rubbed their cheek and then blinked once? And that's <laughs> eh, generally horseshit. Yeah, yeah. And plus, those could be nervous ticks. There could be people yeah. doing all kinds of different stuff. There's 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 reasons for that. And that's another one. Me too. coming back from the dentist. Yeah. When I come back from the dentist, I do stuff that is definitely we gotta we gotta re- we gotta schedule a podcast for right when you get back from the dentist the next time because you are so doped up it's absolutely hilarious but if i catch you when you're going up it's good it's it's on the back end when you're coming down i'm like okay no more of this conversation we gotta go well i don't know what i said so i have to go back and listen (laughs) and i go who is that man so yeah so stuff like that is 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 important to to understand and again even when we talk about like even i we don't have I don't want to get into it on this one, but like deception indicators, right? Hey, well, um, but that's that, a but, whole show. Yeah. But the, which is a good, another way to interpret it. It's like, I didn't say the person was lying. I'm saying they're exhibiting deception indicators. I don't know why they're being deceptive. This might just right. be an embarrassing conversation for them. They may have done nothing wrong. They just don't Precisely. feel like talking to you about it. So that that's another that's another one that 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 gets into a whole a whole nother uh, um, uh, episode. Do you remember just a, a week or so ago we were doing that incredible broadcast for the show? We had such a good yeah. time for those folks. I hope we got some new listeners, and I definitely hope to do that again. And when we were talking offline uh, with Craig, who loved him to death, uh, he was saying, "Well, what are some of the big picture things?" And we were saying. A uh, long three-quarter length wool jacket in yeah. the hottest part of the summer. Yeah. Now listen, that's a starting point. Right. That's not the ending point, but that would be the same advice I would give my son that was going to, uh, you know, on a vacation to a foreign country or or to a marine at Okinawa. Do you get what I'm trying trying to say? Because there's been tension and there might be a body bomber. The idea is big picture signals generally are anomalous against the baseline. That's where you focus more of your time. You're likely to come up with something. I'm not going to tell you what it is, yep. but that's probably where the danger warning Will Robinson is going to be found too. You know. All right. Well, I, yeah. No. I, and I think that's a good that's a good spot to kind of bring in for a landing on um, any uh, any other last um, points on body language. I'm going to be doped up on the 30th. So if you want to, we'll I told you protect that day. Remember, we'll so. schedule a good one for that. We'll- <laughs> But uh, you know, we that. appreciate everyone uh, uh, tuning in. We got more on the, the Patreon site and um, like, please do us a favor, share it with your friends, tell them about it. If you like it, uh, hit, hit up a, a review at the bottom. If you can, it, it helps out a lot to, to get our stuff out there and we can keep going with this. And of course, always reach out to us at leftofgreg at gmail.com. If you're interested in, in us covering a certain topic, there's training coming up too, right, Brian? I mean, isn't there a, an event that's coming up? Where can yeah, they go? Yeah, for they, more they can. About that? They can. They can follow us on social media and find all the details there. And, that's and, cool. And reach out for the for the training in the Midwest and in Indiana uh, in July. Um, uh, I'd like to so, know about that. So we can definitely find the links in the episode details so that if they they want to learn more and come out for a few days. So uh, I think that's all I got for today, Greg. That's all I got for today, Brian. I'm I will, now again. Yeah. <laughs> Remember everyone about body language, right? you know, context, congruence, clusters, right? That's, that's kind of the three, my, my big three takeaways that I could give that you could, you could use today after listening to this podcast, I think. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget that training changes behavior.